During the year we stood there, I realised the one thing I should have held on to more than anything else the heart which governs the emotions. Whilst I was in love, I was the happiest man on earth. But no one can love who has not a heart. Look at what Tin Woodman said to Dorothy in Wizard of Oz. Whilst I was in love, I was the happiest man on earth. I'm sure a Tin Man knew that his love was not to be. Oh, mine is too unrequited. As I listen to her singing a special song, Rainbow Magic, as I gaze at a pale golden figure, perceiving emotions within me surge forth. And I have to tell her my Nerenade. How I felt about her. Ever since we were young, I have to tell her just how much I love her. I'm starting out with you this time. Guilty. Who's guilty? For of what? I feel guilty listening to my classmates enjoy the Halloween party. Wonder when was the last time I felt this way was. Used to feel it often. I felt guilty whenever I was compared to her. This emotion that bubbled up again and again as we compared in terms of height, looks, academic ability. I come to feel it whenever I lied to myself without my realising the emotions have been worn away. So, I felt guilty. It's been a long time since I felt like that. The cacophony of a party drifted on my ears from far away. Probably just imagining it, but I think I could pick out her voice from amongst of us. I smile to myself, thinking how it's usually the way round. The girl my sister wants to. When I reflect when I'm going over to her in a moment, it feels like my hand is reaching into my chest to squeeze at my heart. In an attempt to quell the heat burning at my core, I wander over to a huge aquarium sitting in the corner of the lobby. I stare at my hazy figure reflecting my glass. I'm wearing the same dress as she is. I squint, checking to see whether something out me out something off about my aqua coloured garb. But brightly the aquarium offered me no more than a faint silhouette, which isn't much help. Wait, are we playing one of the twins? No. When my own face weaving in shadow should be, my sister's face looks back at me. Telling myself that it's just a usual illusion, I take a step back, erasing my figure from my glass. Let out a long breath to regain my composure, then leave the lobby and its muffled noise behind. As I make my way through the forest to our meeting place, I start to grow sentimental. When was the first time I get experienced guilt? Since we're twins, it stands to reason that people should compare us, so I've never felt it in relation to that. However, I was even better than her. When I saw how being compared to her hurt her. I thought it would be better if there was no comparisons. So I learned my own academic achievements and accomplishments to her level. At first I thought it was the best, but before I knew it, I started to feel guilty about matching her everything. I didn't spare my her feelings, but it felt like I was looking down on her. What really left me tormented much by guilt was Rouse from my reverie. I would be look upon fine I've already left Forest Path, cut through a row of cherry trees, no I've got a school building. Living where the dark building looks like a squatting giant. 
put a hand on my forehead, chiding myself for becoming a maudlin. The coolness of my palm calms me, but at the same time, I become aware again of a ache in my chest. I've got a hurry. I muttered to myself and set up through grounds at a brisk trot. I soon arrive at the chapel. Making my chest intensify, sending waves of heat from my body. When I think of what I'm about to do, my legs start to shake uncontrollably. I never felt like this before. My nervousness grows with every step I take towards the chapel doors. I can't stop my feet from advancing. Cast a dim glow, the interior of the chapel has an otherworldly feel to it. My downturned eyes nervously follow the red carpet to the end of the aisle, whereupon I raise my head to take in the altar, which is illuminated by the geometric panes or stained glass window above. <sighs> my stomach does a flip, and the person here to meet is already standing at the altar. Is this a betrayal? Even though I fret over a thought, I walk across to her. I thought you'd already be here. The cool voice pins me to a spot. I stop it does another flip and my chest feels tight. The person she loves. As I face her standing in silence, her smile fades and is replaced by a look of confusion. She's beautiful, like one of the angels from the Bible. But in for her simply because of her beauty, her purity. I. She says my name and I take another step closer. She asks me why I called her here. I. I. I try to tell her how I feel, but the words get caught in my throat. Right. I to fall in love with her myself. So there are no comparisons to be made between us. So we're the same. Sasaki kun. She calls my name and I smile. Because she sees me as me. To be differentiated like that. Somehow, all my guilt jangles away as I press my hand to my thundering heart. I confess to her with my trembling lips. That was a very upbeat opening there. I did quite enjoy the way it um, it 
There's a children's story called The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. The story begins when the orphan Dorothy starts living on a farm with her Aunt Em and Uncle Henry. The blazing sun bakes a colour from everything in the vast Kansas prairie, the land, the house, the crops, turning it all to grey. But Dorothy is able to retain some colour in life thanks to her little black dog Toto. However, the story really begins when a cyclone suddenly rips through. The whole house is swept up in the sky with a twister, but Dorothy isn't afraid. The lunch is there, the more the house starts to feel like a comforting cradle. She accepts a twister, and what is surely going to be a terrible fate without protest. As a child, I always found that incredibly reassuring. The lead character in this fairy tale did not fear change. The story begins now as a, out of two girls, one who welcomed change and another who desired stagnation. Chapter 1 La Magician Doz Dorothy's journey begins. A gaze of a white box. Four is well and truly here, huh? Her package is addressed to one, Yuzuri Hayatsuro, me. Brings home the fact we've now entered October. Hey, we are playing as um, Yatsuro. This white box arrives with every turn of the season, without fail. In spring, it contains our spring uniforms. In summer, our summer ones. And now, as summer turns to autumn, it's here our autumn clothes. Oh, switch school. We have a uniform for each season. A stair of six boxes in a row. While the number of boxes changes, their clinical white appearances never do. The sterile boxes remind me of a secure hospital. Easy to enter, but not to leave. No. These boxes represent the school. When I ask myself why I think that, the answer comes out naturally. What do these boxes have in common with the academy? A school is surrounded by high walls for our own protection. The truth is, I sigh to myself, realising I'm overthinking it and reach out to open the middle box. It's either a fresh, clean uniform, impeccably folded. A smell of newness drifts up from a crisp white shirt on top. Go through the rest of the box. Everything's there. Bolero, black skirt, stockings and shoes. The same outfit we wore last year. Autumn is my favourite. Strings have a basic look, but some of the uniform is too form-fitting. And winter one just really isn't really my style. Like the autumn uniform, it's blend of femininity and androgyny. I'll check in to make sure the uniforms are present and accounted for. I take off my nightwear. Step myself in a mirror, clad only in my underwear. And I look at you in the um, screen, clad only in your nightwear, and appreciate the fine luck. Looks like we're playing another beauty this time out. The person looking back at me seems like a stranger. When my body is exposed like this, I don't feel like myself. The figure is bathed in a dazzling morning sunlight, so bright I have to squint. My skin is translucent, milky white, and the curve of my hips and breasts emphasise my womanhood. As I gaze at my breasts, which have grown over the past year, my best friend comes to mind, along with another acquaintance. Going to my younger friend in my cooking club. One of her first years, she's number one. I remember her saying it with a vexed look on her face, and that in turn reminds me of what a full bosomed girl once said to Amity Partner. Dark words remain, but pretty ones disappear in instant. Make sure to remember it. As happened to overhear those words said to her Amity Partner, as she's handed her a note that stuck with me. A memory of someone's past. Whisper myself as I take 
out a predominantly white uniform. Having shelled up to my torso, I look at myself in the mirror again. I find myself fantasising about what she'd think of if she saw me and what she'd say. My always altruistic best friend would definitely tell me I'd look good. But if she'd say the same even if I didn't. Just kind to me. Actually, she'd do the same for anyone. Crack a smile at my reflection. I seem to be in a pessimistic mood this morning. I'm usually an eternal optimist, but not right now. I smile scornful as I dress autumn ten as I guess autumn tends to get people down. I try to feel more like myself. I force a scornful smile and wearing my usual sardonic one. Feeling better, I thread my arms through the core fabric of my shirt sleeves. A horribly perfect fit as usual. I really just suit her. The academy doesn't offer uniforms in regular sizes like small, medium or large. They take out measurements and everything is tailor made. Our own personal uniforms fitted to our bodies like a glove. As I put on my uniform it feels like I'm putting on myself. Putting on the outfit of a president of a council of Nicaea of St. Anglican Academy. Now then. I've got two pairs of shoes too. These are also tailor made. The brand new shoes are just overly shiny and a little tight to start with, but. I wear them in. I double check to make sure there's nothing missing. Two cardigans, two mufflers, two pairs of gloves. I come to Tyrus for fine if we're inside, but with autumn comes the occasional chill. It's up to us to decide whether or not to wear his extras. I check every six empty boxes to make sure I haven't missed anything. I'll stay in my closet and give myself a once over to make sure I'm wearing everything properly and there are no wrinkles. And then I'll have a sigh. Gazing once more into the steely blue eyes of my reflection, confirming I'm still my usual self. Stride out of a room to get breakfast. And after breakfast, I end the episode. Well, then, guys, thanks for watching. Join me next time for some more from Flowers Autumna. Will I carry on the story of Usri Half and see where her story goes? I think we know all know who the main love interest will be in this one. Well, the twins did seem prominent in the intro as well. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye bye. Yeah.